So good morning. Um, back to it. Another okay. week. Okay. Good morning, Ali. So this morning, I am talking to Ali Miles Jenkins, who is the founder of Boom Boss Women, and Ali is really passionate about helping women in business find their find their va va voom and, and hit um, the business walls um, go solo. So I'm really interested to find out more, mm. Ali, this morning. So welcome. Thank you so much for talking to me this morning. Yeah. So how oh, do you... Des- Good morning to you as well. How do you describe um, being a boss? Because obviously I've briefly tried to describe it, but how would you describe what you do? Yes. So a boom boss, if we, if we look at a boom boss as the individual woman over 50, mm-hmm. a boom boss is that woman over 50 who's decided it's actually time to reinvent and to reinvigorate. Um, so really we're about, not just about maybe changing our lifestyle or changing our, our looks or whatever. Um, it's actually about changing our lifestyle in terms of getting a business that's going to give us that. So the business, that's the play on words, boom, as in baby boomer, and boss, as in, you know, boss of your own thing. So it's the proposition is really become your own CEO at work and play finally and get the lifestyle you deserve. So I'm not about um, showing women how to set up more hobby-based businesses. Mm. Um, What the boom boss is about is that determined woman who really wants to, it's what I call her seek, skills, experience, expertise, and knowledge, to really look at what she's amassed over the 50 plus years that she can use to help other people, and then to set up expert-based businesses. So consultant, trainer, coach, mentor, therapist, advisor, or other kind of specialist. So that's really what a boom boss is, someone who's doing that. And I really love the fact that it's very targeted at the business sector because you, you don't often hear about older women um, that are thriving in this industry and really taking it on. And it's never portrayed in the, in the media. You do hear a lot about women starting like hobby type businesses, but business yes. arena is different, isn't it? Yes. How, did you, how did you decide that you were going to target this particular group? Mm-hmm. So I had a couple of epiphany moments, as you sometimes do do when you reach life-changing moments and I'd been running a, a training and management consultancy since 1990 and in 2016 I just started to sense that I wasn't sure I wanted to go on you know up to 30 years with it because it was it was a wonderful opportunity I trained thousands of people worked internationally worked with some wonderful uh, managers and leaders and so on but I was just you know when you've been doing something for a while and it just It didn't really excite me. It didn't really want me to, it didn't really get me to want to get up in the morning and do it. Mm. And it involved a lot of traveling as well. And as you get older, it sounds very glamorous, but I didn't want to be on a train or a plane, you know, every month or so. So um, I was coming, I was actually in a taxi and I was going to Jakarta. It was actually a business trip for that consultancy and I looked down at uh, an email that had pinged through on on the way to Heathrow and uh, it was from an ex-client, a coaching client of mine, chief executive and uh, I looked down and the headline was something like I'm going to resign and I thought oh my goodness because we've been working together and uh, I thought it all been really successful. She'd gone back to work and overcome some of the you know, challenges she'd been having. And then suddenly I thought something's gone wrong and I'm going to get the blame as her coach. <laughs> so I, I hurriedly read through it and it was completely the opposite. She said she'd enjoyed the coaching so much that while she did love her day job, she decided she'd had an epiphany moment. She wanted to be like me. She wanted to be over 50, but with her own business. So she was is going to take all her knowledge as a CEO and then actually start her own business and she said this is going to set me up for my forever after and I thought oh my goodness and it was just it was a seed I didn't do anything with that idea at the time it was just the germ really of an idea Mm. and then I was a few months later I was in San Diego and I was at one of Russell Brunson's conferences because he was my mentor for a while Mm. I was in his inner circle and uh, so I was in San Diego and I was really enjoying the conference and then every time we got to coffee or lunchtime I just felt out of it and I couldn't quite pinpoint it. I think, you know, I'm generally quite confident. Why am I feeling a bit like, you know, a sort of wallflower here? And when I really analysed, I went back and the next session sat down and I thought, you know what, it's because I feel old. Because most of his target audience and most entrepreneurs are, as you say, so much younger. Mm. And so I've been looking around a room of a thousand people and it was the old 80-20 rule. 80% of them were actually uh, guys 
and they were probably all under 30 <laughs> yeah. and there were a few women and a few older guys and I thought this is what's making me feel uncomfortable because I, it's, I'm not so relatable and they're not so relatable to me so when we're chatting in that at coffee we just don't have that kind of synergy mm. and I thought hmm, actually if I'm setting up another business and I'm learning all this stuff there must be millions Millions of women over 50 just like me who want that second bite of the cherry but who also may feel uncomfortable in an environment where everyone's so much younger so much more technically orientated because they've kind of grown up with it and we haven't mm. and uh, I thought yeah actually this is strengthening my original idea so I went away and some months later started this business fabulous what a great story to get into that I mean it's like you say it is that kind of realization that it's still a very youth orientated world out there isn't it in terms of business and yeah. to tap into the older it, markets really it always important. has been do you think um yes i suppose so yeah but i'd like to yes. have thought do you think it it's maybe... probably always been like that it's just as we get older we think it's all about the youth <laughs> yeah probably. but we were the youth ones. but do you think there has been a mm. shift though mm. do you think that we are seeing from your experience and the women that you work with is there a shift in more yeah. women wanting to take on new businesses later in life Yes, absolutely. And I think it's not necessarily just because they've suddenly decided they're a wannabe entrepreneur. I think it's because they're getting those epiphany moments themselves that actually they've still got so much more to give. They've got these wonderful skills and so on that they've honed, often in successful careers. They're feeling maybe a little bit marginalized or pushed out at work, but they still want a lot of of the things that working and having a great income can give you mm. they don't necessarily want to be dependent on their other halves particularly you know if we've had careers we've been quite independent probably as women anyway but they think actually you know I want more time for friends family walking the dog I don't want the you know at the moment of it's not a, a case that you've got to go on the train for two hours a day but you know normally that would be what would happen if you want yeah. to continue to work for many people and women think, I want to spend time with my friends. I, I want to have more discretionary opportunity, really. So what are some of the barriers that, that these women come up against in wanting to make that shift? Mm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is around mindset to start off with. So am I good enough? One of the things that many women say is, oh, I've got to go and get more qualifications first. And that is a myth that I absolutely bust. You, for many, many types of business in an advisory or a consultative capacity, you don't need any more qualifications. So um, I always panic when someone says, oh, I need to go and get another therapy degree for three years first. And I think, no, you really don't. Yeah. So I think that's the, and it's also the mindset around the tech it's mindset around, uh, do they want to be salespeople? So they quite often fear being salesy or pushy or mm. scammy uh, because they see a lot of that stuff on the internet. Sometimes they have to persuade their family that actually they're not just going to retire gracefully and um, join the Women's Institute. <laughs> and that's sometimes you know, family expectations. So people think, mm. oh my goodness, she's going left of field now. So that's really why I put, I've got a, a manifesto and it's called the Moon Boss Manifesto. And that's really our call to arms about actually we can do this. So that's the mindset piece. And I think that's the biggest barrier. Yeah, no, it's really interesting how women are, can be quite bad, can't they? At owning their achievements and their skill set and their, you know, the years of experience that they have and forgetting how transferable all these skills are. And like you yeah, say, about not actually needing to retrain. And yeah. I suppose it's that imposter syndrome still, isn't it? It is. It is. And, and the interesting thing about Im imposter syndrome is that only relatively successful people suffer from it. Mm. So actually, it's a positive. And this is what I say. I say, actually, often the most gifted and talented people feel they're not good enough. Mm. So it's a good sign if you've got imposter syndrome in a way and the <laughs> manifesto does, it's, it's um it really is it's it's a call to arms that we can get on and do it and it talks about the things we need to do and the mindset shift you know that we need to make well, what's the best piece of advice you've been given Ali along the way I think the best piece of advice that I've been given was around not so it, it fits nicely to what we were just saying coincidentally about being self-limiting uh, not about starting my business, but do you remember that awful recession, the last one, 2008-10? Mm. That 
it was a very, very challenging time for my business. And I had to be very inventive in terms of ways to keep my clients and keep the business going. And one of the things I did was I hired a mentor and I'd gone through from 1990 to 2009 without a mentor and looking back that was a mistake but anyway I can remember I was sitting on a rainy day with this guy um, in a room overlooking the Thames somewhere we were in a restaurant and um, he was giving me this mentoring session and uh, he said to me well you know why didn't you ever do more marketing because I was all word of mouth and repeat business really and that worked for me and, he, and I said to him well I was worried that I wouldn't be able to source the work and he turned around to me and he kind of changed my life because he said well wouldn't that have been a wonderful problem to have? Mm. And I never looked at it like that. I always looked at I didn't really want to grow it much past me and a couple of trusted advisors and consultants because I was worried if I did even more marketing, where would yeah. I find the great people? Yeah. And so I just kind of capped it at a level. Yeah. So I would say don't be self-limiting in terms of what you can achieve. And it's that fear, isn't it? It's the fear of the, of the taking it to that next level that you've got to yeah. get past, isn't it? it so is yes how ambitious are you for the future how do you would you like to see boom boss women grow yes so we've had to change plans as with many businesses at the moment because we were primarily an events-based business and although we can do great things online it's not quite the same mm. as getting the women in the room and often I think women over 50 can feel a bit alienated and they don't necessarily like going to events where there's a lot of really young, you know, a lot of younger people. They like connecting because we all speak the same language, yeah. all the same kinds of memories, like the same music. So whenever we get together for an event, which is a serious training event, you know, they absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. And that has been sort of snatched away at the moment. So obviously we have pivoted. We're putting far more online. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're focusing down on three key things. So we've got the podcast which is relatively new uh, at the time of talking to you we're on podcast 12 okay. so we're about to um, put that out there and move on to 13 we've got the six weeks to expert success program which was my major launch program so, and that was so super successful we're going back to do a relaunch of that and we've also got the success club which is a monthly paid membership okay. so all of those they're all in one way about uh, collaboration supporting women over 50 learning from each other as well as being actual kinds of, of teaching programs so uh, what kind of what kind of women do you have on the podcast so on the podcast so I decided to do I'm way behind you with the podcast numbers so we only launched a couple of months ago so I decided I'd do the first 10 as a solo cast mm. and then start to interview women that I have already worked with. They're the first target audience because um, they're fabulous. I know them, I trust them. And yes. if I can help them get their name and their products out there, then that's a great th thing through the podcast as well. So at the moment, I'm going through some of the women who have either volunteered or I know would be fabulous on the podcast. Mm. And then probably once we've done seven or eight of those, I'm going to be looking for more sort of guest speakers. So I'm sure I'll be coming to you, Rachel. No, I was up for that. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of speaking events, um, you are quite comfortable at doing this now. And I know that you did a, a TED talk, didn't you? How did that yes, go? Yes, I did. Yes, that was that was amazing. Again, during COVID, obviously. So we had to scrap the live events. Literally, we were due to do it at the end of March. And of course, that's literally when lockdown first started. Yeah. So we weren't sure for a few months, but then uh, Ted agreed that everybody could do it online. So we were given quite strict uh, rules as to how to do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I did that about five or six weeks ago now. So that was a, a great opportunity. Yeah, that's on my list, bucket list of things I really would love to do yeah. at some point. Yeah. So is there links to see, to watch that? Can, I, can everybody watch that now? Yes. So, um, so the surprising truth about women over 50, is the title so if anybody okay. wants to watch that then literally just put Annie Mars Jenkins the surprising truth over 50 or about women over 50 and it will come up in the search so it's not yeah. a good idea to try and trawl through the TED talks because then you get distracted and watch everybody else's yeah. Other than day. Intended. yeah yeah and that's how they can watch the TED talk yeah. and if you could give one a woman one piece of advice to get them to take that step and that's that change over and transfer from what they're yes. doing now to, to, to stepping out on their own, what would it be to get mm -hmm. them started? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's a really important piece of advice, actually. It's to test before you go too far. So the classic mistake is to get 
try and get all your ducks in a row and spend months and months planning your business, business cards, fussing about your logo, your color scheme, your personal mm. brand, and you try and polish peanuts and get everything in a row. But the thing is, you don't know whether there's an actual need. You can do all your research and I'm a great one for researching and that's made all my programs. We spend a lot of time at that kind of back end, getting that right first rather than the public facing stuff, mm. but get it ready in terms of your positioning, your niche your expertise and so on so that you are in a niche market but then test don't then go and spend a lot of money on a business launch because you may well be disappointed i always say you're in the science lab and that's not just at startup phase that's right the way through you're in the science lab and you're testing things yeah. so when you've got that's why we call it six weeks to expert success you can launch a business and you can get your first paying client within six weeks. And really, if you know what you're doing, you get the right support, that should be all it takes to get it to science lab stage. Mm -hmm. You go into the science lab, you go out there with your ads, your market, your organic um, social media, whatever you choose to launch with, and then you start to test the results. And then you tweak, you tailor, you change. And then even if you've got a hundred thousand pound business or a million pound business, nothing stays the same. It's always testing. And I think this is what not just women, but people in business don't realize. Yeah. They think they've got to get it right from the start. And that's, that's never going to happen yeah. because it's always an experiment. And I guess we're also scared of failing, aren't we, at things? Yes. And actually, yeah. you've got to fail through business to, to keep yeah. learning and growing, don't you? Yeah. Exactly. When you fail, it's a good thing because it mm. gives you other ideas. It gets you to do a double check, rethink. And that's also about keeping the business alive. I always say there's no such thing as failure. It's just a result. Yeah. Yeah. And how can they find your website and all your social media details? Yes. So I'm across most platforms uh, at the moment, probably the podcast, as we, was, we said, um, that's on Apple iTunes and that's called Boom Bossing It. So that would be the next place. My Obviously, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I've got a Facebook page and so on. Boom Boss or Ali Miles Jenkins. If you Google either of those, loads of things come up. So people can find me on Instagram as well, at Ali Miles Jenkins. So quite a few places to um, check out what we're doing. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for talking to me today. I really appreciate it. I know how busy you are. And it's just been great to, uh, to find out more about you. And I love what you're doing. And I look thank forward you. to watching you grow and see the amazing women that you work with. So yeah, thank you brilliant. so much. I hope you stay in touch. Yes, thank you, Ali. Okay, thanks. Bye, Rachel.